body and the atoms who the message that God wants him to deliver tonight. May we bless his life for saying yes to the Lord continuously every day. May he want to be a better man every day. And we ask that, you know, he keeps going. He keeps going no matter what he says because I am a testimony of his life and his dedication to the Lord. And I know he's always doing big things. Amen. 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 Great worship right now, huh? Right. That worship was good. I loved it. I like what St. Augustine actually said was, those who sing well, pray twice. That's actually, the, that's actually his quote that he says, those who yeah. pray well, um, sing, um, pray twice. Those who sing well, pray twice. Not just those who sing, pray twice, but those who sing well. So if you guys don't mind, can you guys be sound up so I can do another thing first? Please. Because it's all about him, you know? I don't deserve to be up here. This is almost eight years to the date I killed a very beautiful person in a car accident, and my life will never be the same. I've spent 17 years of my life in prison, and God's done some amazing things in my life, so I don't deserve to be up here. Like, I don't deserve to be up here. So please, when you guys hear me talking, don't think that I'm, I just, I get, I get excited. I get passionate about what he's done in my life. So don't listen to the way I say things, but listen to the words that are coming out and may God move you guys. Maybe you guys learn something tonight, because it's all about, you know, I'm filthy rat. In nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sanctis. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts full of gratitude and love. We thank you for your this incredible gift of life, the gift of faith, and most importantly, the gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave everything for our salvation. We are humbled by your mercy and your endless compassion, and we thank you for the many ways you showed your love to us each and every single day. Today, we gather to reflect on one of your greatest, the, of the greatest gifts of all, a gift that came down to us from the cross, the gift of Mary, the mother, your mother, and our mother too. You chose Mary from all eternity to be our mother, to be your mother, to be ours preparing her through the Immaculate Conception so that we might be pure and holy, a vessel untouched by sin, ready to bear you, our Savior of the world. We thank you, Lord, for the honor you bestowed upon Mary and her assumption into heaven, body, and soul. We believe that because of her Immaculate Conception, Mary did not suffer the corruption of death, but was taken up to be with you, where she intercedes for us as a loving, compassionate, and ever-caring mother. Lord, as we reflect on Mary's roles in our lives today, help us to open our hearts to her motherly care. May we always turn to her in our times of need, confident that she will lead us closer to you. Help us to love her as you loved her. Help us to honor her as you honored her. Help us to be obedient and loving to her the same way you were, Lord. We ask this all in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, with the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. Thank you, guys. I just got. I just. I just have to do this for myself because I want to make sure I don't get too big head. Sometimes we're up here, we're speakers. But I just got. Just please, just bear with me for a second. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. Tried and true with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. I remember I was an anti Catholic. I was an anti Catholic for years. If you guys didn't know this about me, I was. Mama Mary, get away from me. Catholics are crazy. And so one time I was invited to a chapel. It was Sacred Heart Chapel in Covina, California. I don't know if you guys know Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Yeah, that's where Terry Barber, Jesse Romero do their things. And I was invited to a, this is years ago, this is nine years ago. This is before I went to prison, this is before I killed a very beautiful person in a car accident. But I remember going to this story, I thought it was mass, and I thought I was learning. And when I went in there, it was a conversion story. And they were talking bad about Protestants. I was a Protestant at the time, hardcore Protestant too. And I got so mad that I kicked the pew and actually walked out. 
And I and I kicked the pew hard too. There was this big bodybuilder too. I knew he would have smashed me. He was doing his conversion story and a police officer, Paul Clay. And so while I was doing that, I walked out. I remember walking around the corner. And when I walked back, there's a restroom outside. It's an old church. It's like over 100 years old. There's a restroom outside of it, and there's a door to it. As I was standing out there, this little old lady came up to me, and she told me, why are you out here? What's, what's going on? I said, I'm Protestant. And I'm getting upset because what they're saying in there is that that's what I believe. She literally turned to me, and she gave me the biggest hug in the world. And she said, open your heart. Like, God has you here for a reason. Open your heart. I remember man, feeling this hug for her. And I'm like, she walks in there, and I'm in my addiction at the time. You know, I got trap marks right here to show you. I was actually just slammed earlier that day, and I was just, you know, just out of it. But when she told me that, and when she hugged me, it's like the sobriety came over me. And then I walked over. There's a statue right in front of Virgin Most Powerful. Well, it used to be there. It used to be there, okay? And it was a statue of Mama Mary, and now it's in the back. But I walked up to her, and I told her, why? I'm just like this, and please, I've asked her for forgiveness a hundred times. Why the F are you out here? Why, if Catholics are Christians, why are you out here? And I was crying. And I was crying. Like, why? And then I just, this, this, this rush, this flow came over me. And I just, I, I could feel it because your eternal salvation came from my womb. Jesus came to me, through me, to you. And now I'm calling you back to me. I started crying. And I went back in there, you know, and it was it was just a beautiful moment because at one time I was so anti-Mama Mary, and now I love her so much. She's everything to me. So I will be discussing three points tonight because that was a pivotal moment in my life right there. I would still go to prison, and I would still kill a very beautiful person. August 19th, his name was Randolph Stevenson, by the way. Everything I do is for him. When I talk, when I learn, everything that I did, it's, I remember what he did for me. Because a beautiful man lost their life. Not just God, not just Jesus, but Randolph Stevenson so that I can have a life. That's why I go hardcore. It's not about me. It's about giving back and making reparations. And learning our faith and making reparations, repairing the things that we broke in the past. I'm going to be discussing three points tonight. A mother's love, the last gift Christ gave us from the cross, and a theological look at the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary through the teachings of the Immaculate Conception and our Catholic doctrines. It's very easy to defend in scripture. Because um, I'm big on, you know, I know a lot of Protestants will always talk about mama. Well, what I, what God's given me the gift of is learning the faith and sharing it so that when those moments come, we can defend it. It's one thing that, hey, when, I, when you know about your mama, there's nothing that anybody can't tell you that you're gonna defend. So the more you get to know her, the more you're gonna have an intimate relationship with her. So the first one I'm going to be talking about is a mother's love. A journey to Calvary. The Gospel of John says, When Jesus saw his mother and his disciple, whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And then from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Imagine the love of a mother. Mothers in here, we have mothers in here. Watching your child grow up. Watching him say his first words. Watching him take his first step. Saying mama for the first time. Maybe reading a scripture for the first time. Going to the temple with mama for the first time. Because St. Joseph was always there. Just imagine the first words he would speak. And the, the blossom. Then he blossoms into the person that he was meant to be. And she's so proud of this son. Now imagine that same mother, the heartbreak that she has to go through when she sees her son beaten, bruised, beard pulled out. When we think about the crucifixion, we often focus on the physical sufferings of Jesus. That's just natural because Jesus, he gave his life for us. But we mustn't forget the sufferings of his mother, for Mary stood by helplessly by her son as he was getting beaten and bruised and there's nothing she could do. She could just watch it. She wanted to so bad. I bet you she wanted to run up there. What if you saw one of your loved ones? Mary's journey with Jesus is a journey of profound love, sacrifice, and ultimately a giving of oneself because that's what she did. She was going to raise God. She accepted it. 
Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word, she said. But Mary, Frost, everybody close your eyes real quick. Because I want you to think about somebody that you love. I want you to reflect on someone that you really love right now. That really means a lot to you. And if they were on that cross. I, a lot of times, I, every time I feel like I'm going to lapse back into my old ways. And keep your eyes shut. And, you know, every time I'm going to go back into my old ways or I start getting that stinking thinking, I always got to remind myself of what he did for me. So I always got to bow my mind on the cross and I close my eyes and I just think, so please, I just, I just, that's just something I like to contemplate on right there. But if it was one of your loved ones, just imagine how you would feel. Picture the scene at Calvary. Jesus bruised, bloody, barely recognizable. You couldn't even recognize him. His face was all beat up. Searching for a familiar face in the crowd, he's looking. Just imagine Jesus looking through the crowd. Where's my mom? If they're doing this to me, what are they doing to her? Just imagine Jesus, all bruised from the cross. Barely trying to breathe, but looking for his mom of all the things that he could have said from the cross that day. He was dying. But the one thing he said was, Behold your mother. You just gonna open your eyes now. Now, can you imagine the pain in his heart as he sees the woman who brought him into this world crying? So just imagine how Jesus was feeling now, being on that cross. Seeing his mother crying for him, I'm sure he felt pain. I know when I see my betrothal get tears in her eyes right here, I, I heard, so I can imagine a mother, how deeper it could be. Can you imagine when he speaks to her and he tells her, behold your mother, and then he looks at John and he says, John, behold your mom. But do you guys know what John represents? The one that Jesus loves. Have you guys heard that? In the scriptures it says the one that Jesus loves. Who was the one that Jesus loves? Who was that? Saint, uh, Saint John. Saint John. Who was that? Who's the one that Jesus loves now? Church? Who yeah. Church. I know he loves you right there, boy. You're on fire right there. He loves all of us. So when we see this in the scriptures, the church is taught from the beginning of time that John, the one that Jesus loves, represents all of us. So when he's actually on the cross giving his mother to John, he's giving his mother to every single one of us. He is. And think about it. Even in Revelation, I want to continue going about him, this mother part right there. Because she becomes our mother because in Revelation 12, you know that there's a woman in the sky. She has a crown of, of stars on her head. She's the, what is it, the sun's behind her? The moon's under her feet? You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Revelation 12 talks about this. But it says that she's the mother of the Messiah, but she's also the mother of those who witness about Jesus Christ here on earth. So who witnesses Jesus? Right here, all of them. All of them. Amen. All of them. I know all of you guys do. So when somebody says that Mama Mary isn't our mother, we can go directly to scriptures to say, no, look it. Not only is she the mother of the Messiah, but right there in verse 57, it says he's, she's the mother of all the offspring who witness of Jesus Christ. So that's my mama too. Right? right? If we're Amen. preaching the gospel, we're sharing the word, we're in our faith, she's our mother too. A lot of Protestants don't want to look at that, but we got to make sure that we, we memorize this so we can share this with others because it's about changing their heart. The more that we know about our faith, the more that we can engage with others and when they have those questions or those smart aleck comments, we can actually answer them. Trust me, I'm an ex-Protestant. I was an anti-Catholic for years. I've been falling in love with the Catholic Church. It changed my life. Amen. That chapel of divine mercy you guys were doing, praying the rosary twice a day, adoration, mass. I was a gang member my whole life, but it changed the way I thought, the way I acted, the way I talked. And the more that I practice my faith, and I'm around other brothers that are in the faith, the more I'm being transformed by God's love. And by the love of what? Amen. Our mother, all the way. Right. Think about this. When Jesus is still on the cross. In this moment, Jesus wasn't just caring for his mother when he says, when he tells John to take care of her, right? When he says, behold your mother. But he's actually giving us a mother that she can what? Protect us, right? Who needs Mama Mary in here? I like when 
honest and say that I have Jesus, and I'm like, praise God, I got Jesus too, brother. What you talking about? I got a relationship. You know what I mean? They be talking about relationships all the time. I'm like, I got a relationship. I practice my faith. That's not my relationship with him. I do the Angelus, six million, six. That's my relationship. And I'm coming here and talking with you. That's my relationship. But Jesus needed Mama Mary. Jesus needed her. Think about it. He's born, he's a baby, he comes out in the womb. How did he survive? She took care of him. She provided for him. He needed her to eat. He needed her for protection. He needed her for supplements. He needed her to teach her how to, teach her how to read, how to, I don't know if he had little bikes or little tracks back then, or whatever he was doing during the day, learning how to play the games that the young Hebrew children have. Amen? But he needed her, and likewise, when somebody tells us we don't need Mama Mary, I'm like, dude, how are you going to say you don't need Mama? If Jesus needed a Mama, are you telling me that you're better than Jesus? Oh, man, come on now. And that's, a, that's a big one right there. Come if on. Jesus needed Mama, well, of course, we need Mama too. Amen. We have a loving mother, and we have a loving king that died for us on the cross. And would do anything for us, but even more, he would do things for his mother. Amen. So that's why we talk about this intercession, the way he gave her to us, because we know that Jesus does what? Anything for his mom. Yeah. What did he do at the wedding in Cana? Let's just stop. Turn water into wine. Amen. And so I, I need to tell you kind of how it's explained in the Hebrew. Thank you by that, by the way. I like the yeah, answer. Interaction, interaction. Anybody else can answer? Many of you. <laughs> Um, he's okay, so this is how it goes. There's no wine. Mother Mary goes up to Jesus. Who is this right here? Saint Martin for us? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. yeah, pray for us. Man. I saw my prayers. Um, he goes over there. There's no wine left, and Jesus is like, literally in the Hebrew, he's like, get away from me. Leave. Mm, get to the other side of the world. Because he understands what he's what she's asking him, and literally. It's, Get away from me. And then she's so cool about it. He's like, get away from me, woman. The woman part was respectful, though, just to know that, okay? Very respectful when he said it. It's like a queen, a princess. But when he tells her to get away because he doesn't want nothing to do with it, she doesn't even look at him. What does she do? Or whatever he tells you, make sure you do it. And he's literally, he's literally telling her, you know how moms are. Think about it, mom. No, 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 no. What are you trying to do? Yeah, do it. And what did he do? It, yeah, he, he turned it into wine. It wasn't his time to do miracles yet. But back once again to say the necessity of how he needed her to live. He needed her to, to function on the earth. He could have came, he could have just been like, boom, came down as a human or as a human already. He could have done that. But he knew that we needed a mother also, and he needed her. And so I I, I really like that concept that he came down. And not only was he needing her, but he also gave his mother to us. So praise God for that. And then when the water was turned into wine, he wasn't disrespecting God. Because he's God, amen? amen? He wasn't, but he loved his mother so much. Who took care of him in his nightmares? Who wiped his boo-boos? Who got hurt when you were kids? I used to get hurt all the time, man. Who was always the one that came for us? Mother, right? Because dad was always like, get your butt up or he's in prison, you know? <laughs> and so it was always the mother and that's how it was with Jesus that's why he turned the water into wine because he knew that immense amount of love that she had given to him and that's the same type of love that she has for us in his final moments on the cross Jesus was not only thinking of his own suffering but he thought about every single one of you he was thinking about every single one of us needing a mother to protect us, needing a mother to look after us, needing a mother to be there when it felt like we're all by ourselves. Because sometimes it feels like that, right? Who brings the rosary and you feel like, hey, man, I feel good now. Like, man, I was kind of feeling a little down today, and then all of a sudden I pray the rosary. I ask for the Blessed Mother's um, for her intercession, and boom, it comes to me. I don't know why. I get to the rosary and it's just like, yeah. Thank you very much. Once again, I just want to read that again. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. This was not a moment of profound significance, 
This was a moment of profound significance, sorry. Jesus gave his mother Mary to be our own mother, a gift that would sustain the church through the ages. St. Louis de Montfort beautifully says, to give ourselves to the Blessed Virgin is to belong to her son. Mary's role didn't end with birth, life, and death of Jesus. Instead, her mission continues as she cares for all the believers, leading us closer to her son. And then St. Maximilian Kolbe also said um, that never, basically Maximilian Kolbe said, never be afraid of loving the Blessed Virgin too much. I like this part. I was actually going to quote it, so I'm glad it is right here. You can never love Mama Mary more than you can love Jesus, dude. Jesus loved his mother with an infinite love, and he wants us to love her too. He wants us to welcome her. He wants us to honor her. He wants us to share her with others. Man, I, my talk tonight isn't about the, the Ark of the New Ark of the Covenant, but man, I wish it was. My mind's going to left field right now with it. Amen. It does that sometimes. This is actually going to be my third talk this week on the Blessed Virgin Mary. So I'm doing three talks this week, and every single talk is, this is the first time I've ever done this. So I've never done this talk before. I did one on Tuesday. That was about the Ark of the Covenant and the New Eve and the Theotokos, which is Mama Mary, the Mother of God. Tonight I'm here doing this talk, and then tomorrow I'm doing another one on the, the dogmas of Mary at Sora Susa. So praise God. And I, I really love I, I love God. I love our mother. It's so exciting learning about Catholicism. Amen? Amen. I love it. I can't get enough of it. People tell me it's boring. I said, man, because you ain't got no discipline. Ooh. You just want to be free running around. Because if you're a Catholic, you got to have discipline, you know? Ooh. You're like, you love. That's right. That's right. That's right. The Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, a doctrine. I want to talk about this real quick because who knows about it? It's, it's a feast today, right? Yeah. Amen. And I do this with all because I'm a convert. I've been Catholic for four. It's going to be five years, November 27. But, but I see, I notice a lot of times people are we're all on fire, man. But sometimes with the world and the way it is, we lack our understanding and our knowledge about what we believe. Because I can say the assumption, and people can tell me a lot of things today. I said, oh, what's the piece of the assumption, brother? Um, he pretty much said the Immaculate Conception. Yeah. Or, you know, or they said the Ascension. And it's not the Ascension either, you know? So does anybody have any idea of what it is? There's a couple different stories in our church theology, but anybody? The Virgin assumed uh, into heaven. Yeah. Flesh and blood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, amen, amen, I like that one. Because I want to talk about it because there's some teachings in the church that say that she died, her soul was taken up into heaven, she stayed on the earth for three days, and then it was and then it was assumed into heaven afterwards. That's called the it's called the golden legend. But what I'm gonna talk about is a theological disposition on what I believe and what other theologians talk about is the Immaculate Conception being rooted in the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Let me get to this right here. Um, that she was assumed body and soul when she died. Immediately she was assumed because why she would have a different death. It's common sense because we know that in, in Romans 6.23 it says, for the wages of sin is what? Death. But for the wages of sin is death. So Mama Mary, and the, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. But we know that with Mama Mary, she wasn't conceived with sin, right? There she was conceived without original sin, the immaculate conception. Jesus, through his merit to the cross in a future instance, in her moment of conception, would wrap his arms around her and he would protect our mother and keep her away from that taint of original sin. And he would protect her. And that's a doctrine that we do on December 8th. So we know that she didn't have that original sin. So the assumption of Mary is a doctrine that is deeply rooted, I believe also, in the belief in her immaculate conception. Because she, like I was saying, she was conceived without original sin. This was a unique, supernatural grace that was given, just like Adam and Eve, right? But we know we know how they fell. Now that makes me think about the new Eve right now, but I'm not even going to go there. And then the church teaches this right here: that Mary was not subject to the same death as other human beings. She would even have the same birth as other human beings. So why would our mother die the same way if she was born? Without original sin, with the immaculate conception, so that means that sin could not change or corrupt her body, because it was because of the fall of man 
right? In the Garden of Eden when they ate the tree of the life and death. Was that what it was right there? The forbidden, yeah, that forbidden tree right there. When they ate from it, they sinned. That's when sin came into the world. And so, yeah, and I just want to make sure that um, we understand. That since sin leads to death and Mary was free from all sin, it follows like logically. It's just like, I'm just, it's logical, right? If she was free from sin, then automatically she would not experience death in the same way that we do. Mary, the church teaches, even though there's a lot of stories, a lot of little T traditions, like we have in the church at times, we have two billion Catholics, so of course, it would be, a, you know, stories could go a little left, they could go a little right, but they're usually right in the center, you know? The church teaches at the end of her earthly life that Mary was assumed body and soul into heaven. This event is celebrated as the Assumption of Mary. And what are we celebrating today? Assumption of Mary. Remember, so it was, she was assumed when she passed away. She did not rot. She did not start corrupting. As she was passing, Jesus came and he assumed her body and soul into heaven. Why wouldn't she be the first of the promise? Why wouldn't she be the first to have the revelation of being in heaven with Jesus? Why wouldn't she a part of be part of that first fold? Everything that she did for Jesus? Think about it. It's even deeper than that. I don't want to go off subject, but it gets deeper because she wasn't picked. She wasn't chosen. So that means that from the beginning of time, before anything even existed, before there were things that were visible and invisible, before there was dominions, the thrones, the earth, the waters, and everything, because God knows everything in all existence. He knows it all. He had already been pre-planning how the father, how do I create my daughter? I'm going to make a beautiful little daughter and make her all beautiful. Jesus got to create his mother. Just imagine you create your mothers. Still make them stern though, man. Still make them stern on you guys. Don't make them too easy. And then the Holy Spirit got to create his bride. How beautiful is that to understand that? That it was already preconceived in time that she would be without sin. Why? So that she can give birth to Jesus. And then so why? So that in her end of her earthly life, her body wouldn't corrupt. Because why would Jesus want her, his mother to be suffering? I've seen death. I've heard death. I know how it is. You know? And since she was taken, since she didn't have original sin, that means her death wasn't the same way. She didn't suffer. Amen? Amen. Oh, Mary conceived without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to thee. Is a traditional Catholic invocation that reflects his belief. Mary's freedom from sin meant that her body was not subject to decay, to corruption of death. Instead, Jesus, in his deep love for his mother, assumed her into heaven, where she is now crowned as the Queen of Heaven and the Queen of Earth. St. John Damascus wrote, God has taken her with him, and now, with the heavenly host, we glorify her. The assumption is a powerful reminder of the destiny that waits all of us who remain faithful to God. It is a sign of hope that one day we too will share in the resurrection and eternal life. St. Francis de Sales said, the Blessed Virgin Mary's passing into heaven is the most important. Can you guys please stand real quick? How's my time looking over there? You guys are. I do? Oh, okay, cool. Go ahead. Sit down, okay, guys. I was rushing. I went through a lot of the stuff without doing it, so I just, I didn't know the time frame. Okay, go ahead. Thanks, man. Because he was telling me, Eric, I don't know what's your time like right now. I'm like, oh, I, I wrote a 45 minute talk. Like, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. No, okay, cool, cool. As we come to the end of our reflection on Mama, So there's a little bit of a reflection part right here we're going to do. I, I wanted to make sure we did that. It's one thing for me to talk, but it's another thing for us to really understand her in her valuable intercession. I remember when I got out of prison, um, what was this, in 2020, I got out and it was COVID, and nobody wanted to let me live there. I've been in prison, I've probably been locked up over 100 times. You know, I've been getting locked up since I was 12 years old, and you know, nobody wanted to let me out, you know, live with them. And I'm like, man, what am I going to do? It's COVID. I didn't ask. I didn't ask the. Um, I didn't ask the parole department to get me a place. And when I got out, they were being chicken crap with me, anyways. You know, it was COVID too. 
And man, I was, my grandma let me stay there for like one week and then finally she's like, you can't stay here, me home. I'm like, grandma, I thought you were gonna let me stay here. I'm doing good, I got two degrees, I'm changed, I got all this therapy and self-help, now I'm a different person, I'm Catholic. Please, oh sorry, I can get this right here. You guys can still hear me, right? You guys hear me sound pretty loud, right? Sorry. sorry if the baby hears me, because I am kind of loud. Um, and she told me I couldn't go, and ah, oh, man, I was just so heartbroken, because I have plans, I have goals, I have dreams for the first time in my life. I have goals and visions in my life. I did, I was always homeless my whole life. 17 years in prison, always lived with everybody. I can never get my life together, you know, but finally now I'm Catholic and I'm practicing my faith and something's changing. That universe is boiling something inside of me, healing that I never had before. Confession, things were changing. I'm like, and I don't know where to stay. And in my head, I was thinking, I'm gonna go back to the dope house. And I'm gonna go back to these highness houses. Not the dope house necessarily, but I know my friend's grandma has always been there forever. I know I can always go there and stay. I don't want to go to the street. And I remember I actually just took out a Sally there, a couple of went there uh, like three weeks ago after mass. I took her to that parish because I wanted to show her where, where Randy had died and show her a little bit of my struggles and how I've been giving it to God in my struggles. A lot of people see me smiling on YouTube. They see me all pumped up all the time. They don't know I got struggles. By myself, I rely on God. I don't got no family, I don't got a lot of people around me. I live on my own, I've been doing it for four years. But him, when I rely on him, it's like he took everybody out of my life so I can like, rely on him. And not worry, not rely on my mom, not rely on my cousin, not rely on a woman, not rely on nobody for the last four years. I better rely on him to go gung ho. Because it was, you know, it's, it hasn't been, it hasn't been easy. But in that first week, I remember like, man, I had gotten a job working at Robertson. That's what that job too. Praise God. Work ten work ten hours a day, hard labor, man. In that sun, all day long in the sun. And praise God, I'm still evangelizing over there too. I love it. <laughs> so I remember I got to Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about it. I remember I got to go to the house. I should be dead right now. I should have needles in my arms. I should be sleeping in parts. But he saved me. Right. And I got to share with you. You know, I, I got to share with others. But I remember that day I was walking by St. Joseph the Worker in Loma Linda. And I was like, I remember I was walking down there to that house. I remember I was going, going back to that same place I've been going to my whole life. I went by this church and there was a Blessed Virgin Mary statue. I took my, my, my beloved right there. there, and, and I went in front of it and I begged him. I just cried. And I go, God, you've changed me. The way I act, the way I talk, you give me a job. I have dreams. I have visions. I have goals, Lord. Like, please, I beg you. And I stopped and I prayed the rosary in front of that statue. There's a statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary there. And I said, please, help me. I know I've come this far for... I haven't came as far for me to go back to my old ways again, for, to go back to that old person who I was. You changed me too much, Lord. And I prayed. And you know, the next day, my parole officer actually gave me a, um, a place to stay. Like, I had to pay $600 a month, but it got me on my feet. And since the first week I was out, I've been paying right on my own and doing everything on my own now. So after, it's only free because of him, you know? It's only because of him. He's the one that does it. But it was, it was that love. It was that intercession where before, I would go back to my old ways. Before, I would go and do things that I knew were going to lead to my destruction again. It was insanity. We try to do those things over and over again. Think, oh, it's going to be different this time. It's going to be different this time. You guys know what I'm talking about. We all do it in our own different ways in our lives. You know, it's going to be different. And over and over again, I'd always fail. But this time, even though I was such a, against it at one time, the rosary is developed into my sword. Into my battle, my this is my battle, this is my battle sword right here. It's actually my gun too. 60 millimeter cannon right here, but it changed me. I have 60 beads on this bad boy right here. And but it changed me that day. That day was like, okay, I don't have to go back to my old ways no more. I can trust in God now. It's one thing to trust in God when I'm in prison, but now I'm out here, Lord, and now I got your mother. Now your mother, you're she's gonna I know she's gonna, I know she listened to me, I know she went to him, and that's why I got a place. And that's why I'm here right now speaking to you guys right now is because of her love. Let's take a moment to consider the profound love and care that she has for each one of us. Not just me. That was just a story. I'm telling you stories of experience that I've had with her. But every single one of us she loves. Every single one of us she wants us to have experiences with. So we can grow in deeper love with who? With Jesus. Jesus. Who do you think loves her? Who do you think loves Jesus more than her? I think I love Jesus more than her. But she can teach us how to love Jesus as much as her. She leads us always to him. 
So let's reflect on our profound love. And then from the cross, Jesus gave us his most precious gift, his mother. This is one, was not a gesture of comfort. It was a lasting legacy of his infinite love for humanity. Five minutes, okay, cool. So I want to do this real quick, just because I want to do this real quick. The New Ark of the Covenant. Who's heard Mama Mary the New Ark of the Covenant before? So in the Old yeah. Testament, in the Old Testament was the Ark of the Covenant. Amen? Mm -hmm. I just want to throw this in there real quick because God's telling me to throw it in there. It's so beautiful. I'm talking about the profoundness of her. This is our queen, okay? Our queen mother. So in the Old Testament, the Ark of the Covenant was a dwelling place for God. Let me do it. I'll go really fast, but not too fast. So just tell me if I'm going too fast right now, okay? Uh, so the Ark of the Covenant was a dwelling place for God. He told the children of Israel to build this Ark. And in the Ark, he put a tabernacle. And it was made with gold and diamonds. It looked all man. It probably cost about $100,000, maybe more nowadays. But all made out of gold. And inside of the Ark, in the tabernacle, there were three things that dwelled there. First of all, the pre four things. The presence of God would dwell inside of the tabernacle. Inside of the tabernacle, and they would take it everywhere. Inside of that tabernacle, when they would go to war, what do you think was in front? The tabernacle was in front. Always when they would go to war, it would always lead them to victory for God. But inside of that tabernacle was the high priest staff of Aaron, the showbread, the manna that fell from heaven was inside of there, and also the Ten Commandments. Well, we now, now we, we call Mama Mary the new Ark of the Covenant Lord. Why? Simply because of this. It's really logical, okay? In the old Ark, I told you the items that dwelled in there. Well, now in Mama Mary, God would go and dwell inside of her. The new tabernacle, the new Ark of the Covenant. God, Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, would dwell inside of her. Also, what is Jesus? Who is Jesus? The Ten Commandments was in the old ark. In the new ark, Mama, Jesus is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, was God. God. So now we see, because if you take that Hebrew word for Ten Commandments, it actually says ten words. That's what it says. If you actually go into the translation of it and see, it says it's ten words. So when it says the beginning is the word, so now inside the tabernacle was Jesus, the living word, and then what else was he? The bread of life. Remember in the old tabernacle was the showbread, the manna that fell down from heaven. Remember what Jesus said in John 6, I believe it's 48. He says, your ancestors ate the bread that fell from heaven and they certainly died. But this bread that I will give you, if you eat it, you shall live forever. And Mama Mary would not only contain God inside of her, she would contain that living bread inside of her. She would contain the word made flesh inside of her. And she would also contain Jesus and he's the high priest. So like in the, in the tabernacle was the priestly staff. Jesus is the high priest. In, in order, in order, in, according to the order of Melchizedek, forever and ever. Also was the showbread. Jesus is the bread of life. Also in the old ark was the Ten Commandments, and Jesus is the Word made flesh. So I just wanted to share that real quick with you guys. It's cool because Mama Mary being the new ark of the covenant, and think about it. If the old ark would always lead the children of Israel in the battle, then our mama, who's the new ark of the covenant, always shall lead us in the battle also. That's why Jesus told her to come and give us a rosary. This is a, this is, this is a sword right here. This is a dragon slayer. This is what takes up the enemy. And so, yeah, I just want to say thank you real quick, guys. And I'm going to get to I see, I see, I see Walter back there. Sorry, Walter. I'm going to get to it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Walter, go over there. Like, <laughs> so, so let me just say, so here we go. I, I'm going to end it right now. You guys want to turn down the lights a little bit? You want to come up here, brother? Or... In the end, our journey of faith is a journey to the heart of Jesus. And Mary, more than anyone else, knows the way to him. She is our God. guide, our protector, and our intercessor. By embracing her as mother, we embrace the fullness of God's love, manifested in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Eric.
didn't know it was that intense, to be honest. I heard parts of it. I didn't know that he had spent that much time in jail. 